Well, good evening, Faith Baptist Church. I want to wish everyone once again a happy Father's Day. I hope that today has been a great day for you and your family. I hope you spent a lot of time trying to just make memories, maybe even spend time talking about uh, remembering, reminiscing memories of the past with your family, and thanking God for your Father's influence upon your life. And also, as we said this morning, I'm praying that the men of our church will understand our responsibility to lead consistently. And if we lead consistently, it helps those who are following us to be able to uh, live a life with less fear, less anxiety. And I'm hoping tonight's message will add to that. You know, I, I was preaching this morning and even this evening on Father's Day, a theme of Father's Day and some specific messages. I, I don't normally preach themed messages very well. I'm not good at that, seasonal messages. However, the Lord just laid on my own heart about these particular lessons, both of these being so very important for every man to understand, and every woman for that matter, to understand, especially tonight, the importance of, of, of controlling your speech or paying close attention to your speech. Because your speech can make a huge impact, positive or negative, not just on one person, but on many people. Maybe even folks you don't realize are watching you or paying attention to anything you do. Your speech is very important. So Taming My Tongue is the title of the message this evening. I invite you to take your Bibles to James chapter 3, please. James chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in verse number 8 in just a moment. James chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in verse number 8 in just a moment. Taming my tongue. I, ha I have to work on it. It's not easy. Every person has to work on their tongue. As a matter of fact, Doc used to tell us in, in Bible class all the time that, you know, if a man can learn to control his tongue or discipline his tongue, the rest of life's disciplines will be easy. And I think about that often, the importance of the work that it takes, but the necessity of paying close attention, being careful with the things that I say. Taming my tongue, James chapter 3, verse number 8, the Bible says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Now that's not a very encouraging verse to start with, but I want to really, really focus in on the fact that our tongue, more so than really any other part of our body, has the potential for great destruction. And I say that right at the very beginning of the message to really just maybe grab our attention. And God grabs our attention with the huge, huge realm of discipline needed to control our tongue. Because if we don't control it, we'll hurt people. We'll hurt relationships. We'll hurt uh, the future potential relationships. We can, we can do a lot of destructive damage if we're not careful. So let's ask the Lord for his help as we continue this study. We'll go to the book of James chapter 3 and spend quite a bit of time here in a few moments after we pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace and mercy towards us. Thank you for your word that gives us instructions on how to be men and women who honor you with our speech. I pray you'd help us to take good notes tonight, mentally and spiritually, that we would pay attention to the, the, uh, the work that's needed, the effort that's needed to get better at this, to get more consistent in the area of speech. God, we acknowledge the fact that we need your help, so we ask for it right now. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, taming my tongue, the destruction, destructive possibilities are there. We've mentioned that. But let's start from this point forward, looking at how we can work to control it, the different aspects that we need to control, and whys and whats and hows of taming my tongue. You and I, human beings, man has the ability to tame beasts. We can, we, can, we can work with animals, we can tame birds and, and serpents, but not the tongue. The Bible says that, can, that the tongue can no man tame. Only God can accomplish that feat. He, we need his help. We need, we need his constant uh, care and, and input in our lives in order for us to control the things that come out of our mouth. The question is, will you and I allow him to do it? Because sometimes, sometimes allowing God to control our speech or to help us control our speech means that we can't just say whatever we want to say. And whenever the, the opportunity to come back and say something sarcastic to someone else or, or a really quick, harsh, mean-spirited response to someone is what, what would please the flesh. And yet, in order to please God, we have to not say those things. The power of the tongue. Let's just go through quickly what does the Bible say in James 3 about how strong the tongue is. Well, first of all, the tongue has the power to direct. The tongue has the power to direct. Let's look back at verse number 3, please. James 3, verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Growing up in West Texas, there were a lot of horses there. I spent time 
uh, mostly just cleaning up after horses. There was a particular family that had quite a few horses, and I would go and, and clean up the stalls and all that's involved with that. Did a lot of time there, but I, I found it always interesting just seeing how strong a horse is. And, and I'm told, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, but I'm told that a horse possesses more muscle, more raw power in one of its legs than any human being does. I mean, it's just a very, very strong animal. But yet we can put a bit in a horse's mouth and turn it wherever we want it to go. And the Bible describes the tongue as uh, this has this ability to, to, to be compared to negatively to a, to a bit in a horse's mouth. But also the rudder. Verse number four, it says, Behold, as also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven in a fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. So and the tongue has a power to direct, just like a bit controls the horse and just like a rudder controls a great big old ship. Uh, that's what the tongue can do. It can control the conversation. It can control a relationship. It can control the mood of, of a setting, a, a conversation within a room, a great group of people. Um, whenever we have a few moments extra time, we like to go over to Port Huron. And you can sit there on the, on the shore and you can watch these gigantic ships come by there. And they're just, they're just fascinating. They're awe-inspiring, really, to see how humongous those things are. And yet, whenever you consider how small, in comparison, the rudder is, and yet it, that rudder controls the direction. The tongue is a very small piece of our entire body. You get somebody like me, I'm a big guy, and, and you got the tongue, and the Bible's talking more about how much power it, it has to, to either direct for positive or negative towards Christ-honoring relationships or tear those down. I've got to really pay attention to the tongue because it has power to direct. Secondly, the tongue has power to destroy. Look at James chapter 3, verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things, behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You know, I'm sure everybody can relate to the fact that there have been times whenever we've said things that we shouldn't, and almost immediately we wish we wouldn't have said it, wish we could take it back somehow, and yet we can't. It can really cause a lot of problems. It's, the, the, the tongue here is kind of compared somewhat to a fire that destroys the destructive power of the, uh, of, the, of the tongue. But also, the Bible describes the tongue and compares it to a poisonous beast. Look back at our, at our text here in James 3. Look at verse number 6. The tongue, tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Verse 7. And every kind of beast, of the birds, the serpents, the things in the sea, is tamed and hath been tamed by mankind. This, the poisonous beast is mentioned there. Boy, the, the tongue has power to direct. The, power has tongue, the tongue has power to destroy, cause great damage, and also the tongue has power to delight. Look at verse number 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which, we are, which are made after the similitude of God. Look at verse 11. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? I can... I can say out of my mouth really good sounding things and encourage someone else and, and I can also with the same amount of energy say something, sometimes less energy, say something harsh and mean and cruel and, and really do destructive um, destruction to, to that person I'm saying it to or about. The tongue has the power to bring delight, like a, a sweet water is divided, just described in verses 9 through 11, but the tongue also has the potential power of delight with good fruit. Look at verse 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. I tell you, I'm, I'm convicted by this because I, I found myself having to just really get humble before the Lord, humble myself before God and say, God, my tongue is, is really being hypocritical. I, I'm not calling somebody else a hypocrite. I'm calling myself a hypocrite. There are times whenever I can smile at someone and I can say words that are really encouraging to them, and in my mind I'm thinking something completely opposite. I've got to be very careful that I think before I speak, but I also have to be careful of the things that I think about while I'm speaking. Am I just saying this to flatter someone? Am I just saying this to be nice? Am I just saying this to, for whatever the reasons, am I trying to impress somebody else? I've got to be careful. Be very, very careful. The tongue has power to direct. The power has tongue to. Uh, the tongue has the power to destroy, and the tongue has the power to delight. The power of the tongue. But let's notice also the problem with the tongue. I'm going to invite you to go with me back to the book of Proverbs. We're going to spend a few minutes here in Proverbs. We'll begin in chapter 10. The problem with the tongue. Chapter 10. Look at verse number 18. 
I'm going to list off several things. About, about, about six things here that the Bible describes that the, that the tongue has a, it causes a problem or has a problem. There's, there's something wrong with the way we speak. So first of all, the sin of deceitful slander. The tongue can be used to slander someone else, to talk bad about someone else. Chapter 10, verse 18, where the Bible says, He that hideth hatred is li with lying lips, and he that uttereth a, uttereth a slander is a fool. I, a pretty, pretty simple way to, to, to illustrate that. I could walk up to you and say, Hey, good morning, brother. And in my mind, I'm thinking, Boy, I wish you didn't come. What I wish you weren't here right now. And inside, I could be thinking it, but saying it with a positive, positive outlook on the outside there's something wrong with that. That's a sinful thing. Got to be careful. The sin of deceitful slander. Also, the sin of, of gossip. This is one that all of us have to work on. Look at chapter 11, Proverbs 11, verse 13, where the Bible says, A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Turn over to chapter 18, and verse number 8. Chapter 18, verse number 8. Another way we use our tongue is for gossip. It's not only just talking bad about someone or thinking bad about someone, but it's now speaking and telling things we have no business talking about. Look at verse number 8 of chapter 18, where the Bible says, The words of a talebearer are, of, are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Whenever I speak gossip, whenever I speak out of turn, whenever I speak inappropriate things about someone else, it causes deep wounds, deep scars. You know, I, I think probably all of us can relate to this, that Whoever came up with that statement, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Boy, that person either was living in isolation on an island somewhere by themselves, or they just didn't have a very good grip of reality. Because reality is that words hurt. They cause deep wounds. They can, they can really be something that changes our mindset and really scars us for life. If we're not careful with our words, they can cause permanent damage. We've got to be careful. The sin of gossip, but also the sin of angry words. Look at several passages here. Look at chapter 14, Proverbs 14. Look at verse number 17. Proverbs 14, verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Boy, out of the angry words, if you speak angry, soon angry words, you deal foolishly. Verse number 17 says that. Look at chapter 15, verse number 1. Chapter 15, verse number 1. And by the way, I do think that the really good advice there that I've heard myself from others is that whenever you're angry, the angry you are, the less you need to speak. Be very careful not to speak whenever you're angry. Uh, and just take a few moments. I'm not saying walk away and, and have a little private time. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying whenever you're angry, you need to speak carefully. Speak less than you want to. Look at verse number, chapter 15, verse number 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. Look at chapter 18, verse number 6. Chapter 18, verse 6. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Boy, if I'm not careful, I can I can add fuel to the fire very quickly. Someone comes to me upset, and they say something. I smart off back to them, or I, I, I stick my nose where it doesn't belong in somebody else's business and add fuel to the fire there and make things worse. Boy, i, I got to be careful that I don't add angry words to make things worse. Look at chapter 22, verse 24. Chapter 22, verse 24, where the Bible says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Be, don't, even, don't be associated with an angry man. Look at verse 25. Lest thou learn his ways, and get a snare to thy soul. Boy, I tell you, whenever we spend time around people, their personalities rub off on us. Whether we like it or not, that's just a reality. I think all the time when I'm thinking about the influence of others, my mind immediately goes all the way back to when I was a little kid, and I used to watch that little cartoon movie, 101 Dalmatians. And in the very first scene of that movie, the dog is looking out the window into the park, and, and he's noticing that the dogs walk by, and their owners walk by right there with them on a leash, and the dog and the owner look alike. They've rubbed off on each other. Well, this passage of Scripture says, don't make friendship with an angry man unless, or the, the problem or the concern is that if you spend time with them, their habits will rub off on you. And that's not a good thing. You've got to be on guard. Stay away from that influence. Look at chapter 29, verse 22, please. Chapter 29, verse 22, where the Bible says, An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. I tell you, anger makes us act in ways we normally wouldn't and say things we normally wouldn't and we get in trouble we get involved in things that we normally wouldn't so you got to be careful about uh, angry words and acting with with hatred or malice towards someone else in the way that you speak the sin of angry words let's notice also the sin of lying turn back to proverbs chapter 6 chapter 6 verse 16 
Proverbs chapter 6. Every one of these types of sins we're talking about, the problem with the tongue, all these different types of sin, the sin of deceitful slander, sin of gossip, sin of angry words, now the sin of, of lying, these all had to do with our speech, our tongue. And we're working this evening on taming our tongue. It's uh, The tongue can be an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, or the tongue can be a blessing, an encouragement, a help. Let's look at the sin of lying that takes place with the tongue. Chapter 6, verse 16. These six things that the Lord, what's the next word? Hate. God hates these things. Seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, what's the second one? A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. God hates it whenever we lie. Fact, back to the Bible. Chapter 19. Proverbs 19. Look at verse number 5. Proverbs 19. Look at verse number 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. I'm going to have to answer for myself. I'm going to answer for my own words. And we're going to see more about that in a few moments. That one day I'll answer for the things I say. And part of what I have to answer for, it says it black and white. No, no getting around it. I'm going to have to answer for being a false witness, for speaking things that just simply are not true. The sin of lying. There's also the sin of hypocrisy. Turn back to 11. Proverbs 11, verse number 9. Proverbs 11, verse number 9. A sin of hypocrisy. Things that come out of my mouth. I mentioned a few minutes ago that sometimes I've been convicted of being hypocritical in my speech. Saying thing out, saying something out loud, and yet in my mind I'm thinking something completely different. Chapter 11, look at verse number 9. Proverbs 11, verse 9, A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be saved. That hypocritically, I can I can smile and say, Good morning, brother, and as soon as you get away from me, start tearing you down, stabbing you in the back, talking bad about you, and just really try to, to ruin your testimony with my words. If I don't control my mouth, I'll be guilty of these things. Another sin the Bible describes that takes place with the mouth is the sin of hasty judgment. Turn back one more one more passage here. Proverbs 18, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. Hasty judgment. Seeing thing, something and saying something. A judgmental statement very quickly without knowing all the details or hearing all the facts. Chapter 18, verse number 13. The Bible says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So boy, nothing about that verse is very positive. Nothing about that verse is something I want to be true in my life. Nothing about that is something to strive for. Actually, I want to strive for the opposite. I don't want to be. I don't want to be hasty in judgment. I want to be hasty in speech because there's there's accountability that comes with that. I'll have to answer to God for it. The power of the tongue. I need to work to control my tongue because the power of the tongue is it can be helpful or it can be destructive. The problem with the tongue. The Bible goes into great detail in the Book of Proverbs about different types of sin that I can be guilty of if I don't control or discipline my tongue. And lastly, the procedures in taming the tongue. How do I? How do I work towards getting better at this? Now, in James chapter 3, it talked about the fact that no man can tame it, fully control your tongue. Now, hopefully, day by day, the more we mature in our walk with the Lord, and mentally and emotionally, spiritually, we grow. Hopefully, there's less and less, fewer times where we, where we speak out of turn, or we say something we shouldn't, or we fail, or just, we're destructive with our mouth. Hopefully, there's less of that because we grow and mature. But there's some different steps that I can work on, really, on a daily basis and getting better on controlling, taming my tongue. Let's think, first of all, of dedicating your heart and tongue to God. You know, I, I don't have you turn there, but in Psalm chapter 19, verse 14, the Bible says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. God, I want the things I think about, I want the things that I say to be pleasing to you, Lord. I want you to be pleased with me, your child, as I use my tongue, as I speak to other people, as I speak about other people, whether they're present or not present, I want my words to please you. Dedicate your heart and your tongue to God. Secondly, you and I need to assume responsibility for every word that we speak. Really important that we look together. Matthew chapter 12. Please take your Bible, every Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 12 and look at verse number 36 with me, please. What an important verse of scripture. I tell you, I, I never saw this growing up and as an adult, I saw this verse and really just kind of set up straight to pay attention to it because, boy, what a convicting, what a what a shaking verse. Uh, something really shake, shakes your thinking and shakes the reality that you and I have to be careful with the things that we say. Matthew 12, 36, the Bible says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 
I'm going to have to answer to God for the things that I do or don't do. I'm going to have to give answer to God for the way that I treat others and talk to others. And I have to be careful with this. Assume responsibility for every spoken word. We were in James earlier, and we read the verse, verse number two. It says, "If any man, if if any, in many things we offend all, we've got to be careful. If we're not, if we're not careful, there's a lot of things that we can just kind of let let go. And the first thing usually to let go is the things that come out of our mouth. And let go by let go, I mean not pay attention, not be disciplined in our efforts to control it. Just kind of say whatever we want, however we want, and sometimes regret it very quickly afterwards." But, you know, I think about probably one of the greatest goals that we can look look for or work towards is that whenever I go to bed at night, I want to be able to say, you know, Lord, by your grace, with your help today, I didn't offend anyone in my speech. By your grace and with your help today, I didn't gossip about someone. By your grace and with your help today, God, I honored you and you were pleased with the things I thought about and I spoke about. Boy, what a great goal to, to work towards every day. In many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. God, I want to be that perfect man. I want to get more like you. I want to grow in this area. And, and you know, God, another thing, part, another part of this thing of controlling my speech is taming my tongue is, is asking for forgiveness, seeking forgiveness whenever I speak out of turn. If I gossip about someone, I need to go to them and ask them to forgive me. I can't go to all the people I gossip to and take all the words back. That can't happen. But I can go to the person and say, you know what? I was out of line. I was inappropriate. I sinned against God. And I sinned against you. I shouldn't have said those things. I was absolutely wrong. Will you forgive me, please? I was out of place. I was wrong. Would you forgive me? Not, you know, if you wouldn't act like that, I wouldn't have said this. Or, no, you should work on this. But, I listen, we're not talking about trying to place any type of responsibility on someone else. We're acknowledging that I need to seek forgiveness whenever I use my tongue for a way that dishonors God, that dishonors someone else. I need to take care of it, seek forgiveness for any unloving words. If I offend someone, or whether they even know about it or not, if, I, if I've if i spoken out of turn, I need forgiveness. And then use words that will encourage and comfort, inspire, and edify other people. Colossians chapter 4, the last verse I'll have you look at this evening. Turn there with me, please. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 6. I was thinking about this message, and yes, I know that James chapter 3 has a lot to say about the tongue, and I'm glad it does. It helps me. I look at that chapter, and I learn about some positives and negatives about the using, using the tongue God's given me. I see the responsibility of, of using my tongue wisely in a way that honors God. I can either help or tear down, and I want it to be helpful. But whenever I think about controlling my tongue or taming my tongue as this entire message is built upon, Really, if there's one particular theme verse or one goal type of verse that I have, it kind of wraps up earlier. I said, boy, if I can go to bed at night and say I haven't offended anybody or gossiped with anybody. This particular word, this particular verse right here in Colossians chapter 4, verse number 6, would be the theme verse or the goal verse. The Bible says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Now, this is going to sound silly to you probably, but I, I really love to grill stuff on. I, I, chicken, steak, burger, I, I like to use the grill, the barbecue pit, and I, and, I, and I love to do it. I enjoy it. But, you know, long before anything goes on the heat of that grill, I'll take that meat, and sometimes Angela does it if I'm not home yet, but we'll take that meat, let's say hamburger, for instance, and you take it and you, you add a lot of things to it. You add a raw egg and breadcrumbs and salt and pepper and, barbecue sauce and maybe some cheese oh I'm getting I'm getting hungry thinking about it you add these different little things to this to this this meat and, and then you mix it all together so it's good and mixed and then you form or shape every single one of those burger patties ind independently and then sometimes you even add a little bit more pepper or salt or whatever you want on it as you put it on the grill there's a lot of work that goes into preparing the meat before you even put it on the grill and that and that has to be grilled a certain temperature a certain way and you have to be careful with that until you finally get to enjoy the meat that you're about to eat you know i think about that when i think about my words i'm going to be careful to think seasoning them with salt means i take time to chew on them to think on them in my mind chew on this maybe the wrong way to say it but to consider it to contemplate what i'm thinking in my head before it comes out of my mouth to make sure the words in my mouth bring edification, encouragement to the person who's hearing it. When I have opportunity to gossip about someone, if I think about it for just a moment, think, you know, this doesn't honor God, this is a sin, 
And I don't say that those words of gossip. I don't participate in it. I don't listen to it. I don't be involved in it. Whenever I edify, whenever I speak good, positive, uplifting things about someone, even when they're not in my presence, that's using my tongue to speak words of encouragement, ministering grace to someone else by the way that I speak. Isaiah chapter 50, verse number 4, the Bible says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that, or so that it might be so, or for the purpose of, that I should know how to speak of word, a word in season to him that is weary. My words can be used to uplift someone who's saddened. My words can be used to encourage someone. My words can be used to point someone to Christ. My words can be used a whole lot of different ways. But we've seen very clearly from the Bible in the first two points that the, the tongue can be used in ungodly way, harmful, destructive ways. And now we've seen how it can be used positive. Probably like me, you want, it to be, you want to be positive in your speech. And the only way we can do that is to spend time in the Word of God, just like we said this morning, spending time in the Word of God, allowing the Bible to dictate to us the things that we think about, the things we say, the way we respond. What does the Bible say about this? What's the biblical principle in this relationship? You know, church, I hope this, this message has been a challenge to you. It cer certainly has for me as I'm trying to lead. You know, one last thing I'll say about leadership today and Father's Day and the tongue is that I found in my life that if I'm not careful with my tongue, I will disqualify myself as a leader. What I mean by that is if I'm not careful, I can say something harsh, cruel, mean. I can say something quick without thinking about it. And now as I say the words, as it comes out of my mouth, my my respectable uh, my respect level or the, the respect I'm receiving from the person hearing it, that goes down. You know, even if they laugh at that joke that I told, my respect level goes down. They, they respect me less. If I'm not careful with my tongue and say something hateful, my respect level goes down. If I gossip about someone else, they start immediately to think, you know, if they gossip about, if he would gossip about so-and-so when they're not around, they would, he would certainly gossip about me when I'm not around. Our respect levels go down. We, we do damage to our influence by not controlling our tongue. Obviously, the biggest influence of the tongue, or the biggest people we can influence with our tongue is our immediate family, those who live in our homes, whether it's our wife or our children or our husbands or our children or our parents and as a child speaking to them or about them. I want to encourage your family to, to, to work, hard at, work hard at making sure you think about what you're going to say before you say it. I want to give you a goal to strive to honor God and the things that you think about and say, let's use our tongues for ways to edify and encourage instead of to destroy and tear down. May God be glorified in the words that come out of our mouth. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement to speak words that edify and encourage and build up. May we be working hard, diligently, to be that type of child of God. That you be pleased with the things we think about and things we say. We love you, God. Thank you for loving us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, church family, I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a great week.